Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Glory be to Jesus Christ. Glory forever. Uh, today, uh, I'd like to focus on the last line of the Gospel uh, that Jesus uh, said in Matthew. It, and it says, Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. Uh, notice that that is the same message that John, John the baptizer, uh, preached uh, it, it was a ministry of repentance. He baptized with water, but he said there's one mightier than him that comes, and he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. So, repentance comes, be repentance comes before being filled with the Holy Spirit. Uh, the one case that is different that I remember in Holy Scripture is when John was still in the womb of Elizabeth and Mary came and visited and she was already pregnant with uh, the Lord and, they, and she came and stayed with her about three months but as soon as uh, uh, Mary came into the house of Elizabeth it says the babe in her womb leaped and so John even in the womb recognized the, the Savior the Messiah so he was filled before he was even born, but he was a he was the uh, prophet. God had called him to be a prophet and to uh, make to cry out, uh, make straight the path, because uh, the Lord is coming. And his whole ministry, I could say, was of repentance, baptizing uh, with water. He even scolded some of the uh, Sa uh, uh, Sadducees and the Pharisees uh, as they came. Uh, maybe they wanted to see what was going on in the wilderness uh, of this. Uh, they probably thought he was a madman, uh, John the Baptist. But uh, he even scolded them. Who, is, who has told you to flee from the wrath to come? And so he didn't hold back uh, upon uh, his words. Uh, being a prophet, uh, he would speak in the power of the Holy Spirit. And when you speak in the power of the Holy Spirit, some people don't like it uh, because it uh, makes them uncomfortable. So, the Lord's ministry, as we just celebrated Theophany, the Epiphany of the Lord, when he was baptized by John in the Jordan, uh, we saw the Father, the, the dove come and land upon the Lord which is a, was a picture of the Holy Spirit, but also the voice from heaven saying, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. So the Lord's ministry though, before he started his public ministry, uh, it was prefaced by John by saying, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. He even had uh, a deal uh, with the king and it cost him his head. Uh, and I remember watching um, a, a show, a movie, a long time ago when I was a child. And it uh, had Charlton Heston in it. And uh, he played John the Baptist. And I, it might have been uh, the greatest story ever told. I'm not sure exactly what movie it was. But he played uh, the part of John the Baptist. And he, of course, was telling the king, that You're, you can't do, you can't marry this woman and, and all that. And so he brought a lot of contention into that relationship and it even uh, and so you know when the, when the daughter danced and all that stuff and he I don't know why he did why the king said uh, I'll give you half blah 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 you know the story but the thing is uh, uh, the request was made for John's head to be brought on the a platter and it really grieved the king that that he had to follow through on that because now he got all these people watching this and say, well, he's, he's got to follow through with the promise he made. And sure enough, uh, you know, they brought the head of John the Baptist. But 
it reminds me in the movie, as I was talking about this movie, as they led John into the area where they were going to behead him, uh, he even cried out one last time in a very loud voice, repent. And so that ministered to me. You know, that even as a child, I, I never forgot that movie of, of how uh, John uh, the Baptist uh, cried out, repent, even before the sword came down and severed his, his head from his body. So, we're going to talk a little bit, bit about repentance this morning. And sometimes it can become uncomfortable to talk about repentance, but it's something that has to do uh, with our salvation. Because even in the liturgy, it tells us repentance is the means of salvation. So what is it? What is this uh, word repentance? It has to accompany faith. But it is a total about face. In the Greek, the word is metanoia, is the Greek word. Two words. And it means to turn around and walk the other way. To change one's mind. Uh, we are free will creatures. We can uh, do what we want. We have free will. God doesn't want us to be robots. He wants us to have free will. And he wants us to come to him. Just as um, he gave commandments to Israel, not to punish them, but to uh, protect them. It was for their goodness. And as Christ comes and gives us commandments also, it's not to punish us or to restrict our movement, but it is the wisdom of God for our, for our true liberty in Christ, following the commandments of, of our Lord. So let's do some more de detail here on, on repentance. It is a radical change of one's spirit, one's mind, thought, and heart. A complete reorientation of the whole of one's life. You think about the Lord. He was, uh, for like 30 years, he was just going about. Uh, we caught we call him in the gospel when he was 12 years old, teaching in the temple, uh, being the true catechist, a uh, true teacher. But then it's kind of quiet up to the point of his baptism. And then when he comes out of the Jordan River, instead of going to a baptismal party and celebrating, the Holy Spirit leads him into the wilderness for 40 days to be tempted. Jesus became radical at that time. Uh, as we as we surrender our will, as it says in the Lord's Prayer, not my will, but thy will be done, may we become radical and, and uh, zealous for Christ. And to where do you want to spend your eternity? In the abyss or with God in heaven, his king heavenly kingdom? Where do you want to spend your eternity? Because there is one or the other location. There is no in-between. It's not the way you want it to be. It's the way God has provided everything for you to make it into heaven. And it's like having a box of tools and not even opening the box. Nice box, but everything you need to accomplish the task of the salvation of the soul is in that box and you won't open it. You'll just go on your merry, your, your merry way and go about life and, uh, and focus on everything that you see with your eyes around here. But there's more to life than just mowing the lawn, going to work, doing the laundry, you know, all those tasks we have to do, washing the dishes or whatever. There's more to life than all of that. And it's getting your soul ready to be in heaven, to face we say in the liturgy that we would have a good defense before the awesome judgment seat of Christ and that's where it's going to end. And we're going to stand there before the Lord naked. But you're not going to have anybody around you to coach you. And the books are going to be open and you're going to have to give an account. Every word. Imagine every word. And I would say, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. 
to follow the Lord, to be a zealot of, of Christ Jesus. This is the first necessary step of repentance. You can ask. You can ask for the gift of repentance. Lord, help me repent. Let me not be uh, the, the snake that I am in this life. Let me repent and put away the garbage. And I know it's not, you know, they say, well, it's your fault because of Adam's sin and all that. No, it's the ancestral curse has come upon us. But we have a responsibility through Christ Jesus coming to this earth as we celebrated his nativity, now his theophany. We have, he has provided, like I say, all the tools for our salvation. Please open the toolbox and use the tools that God has provided for us for our salvation. We know that when there's repentance, when you change your mind and you walk a different way, then there's baptism. The act of baptism is followed by a life filled with the fruit of the Holy Spirit because after baptism you're chrismated in the, in the Orthodox Church. You, you come out of the baptismal waters a new person, a new creature in Christ, as it tells us in the Scripture. And then you go right into the, uh, the sacrament or the mysterion, as we call in the church, of chrismation, being sealed. So you have all the tools. God has, has blessed you with all of that. With this, we can begin our new life in Christ. And that process we call in the church theosis. Another Greek word. This term is central to the patristic theology. It is also translated as deification or divination. And I remember one of the church fathers tell us, tells us this. God became man, so man become like God. So we need to become more like Jesus Christ. We can never be Christ. We can never have his essence, but we can be like him. This theosis, it means through grace, the power of God, we can become what God is by nature. But it requ requires us to self-emptying. We've got to empty ourselves. That's that not what my will, but thy will be done. Now the process of transformation from the old life, from the old man to the new man, is that process of self-emptying, unloading the baggage. And that word theosis, you see the word theo in there, which means God. The root is theoria, meaning illumination with the vision of God. You know, we're born, we're self-conscious, because you cry, you have a diaper change, you're hungry, you cry, and so forth. And then as you grow older, you learn that you're not just self-conscious, you're world-conscious. You know that there's a world out there. My mommy let, let me go out and ride my bicycle one, at one block, one block around. That was it. And as, she, as, my, as I built trust with my mom, she expanded my world to maybe two blocks and so forth. And then after a period of time, I could drive my bicycle wherever, I, you know, a, a long distance from home. It seemed like a long distance, but it wasn't. If you're in a car, it's short. If you're on a bicycle, it's long. And so that was that trust that I had to give my mom. She could trust me that I wouldn't screw up. Responsibility. And so we have to, after our repentance of changing our mind and going through the sacrament of baptism and chrismation, and now we step into theosis and become more like Jesus Christ. That should be our, our goal. So we have self-conscious. We have now the world consciousness by seeing what there's, you're not the only one on this planet, but the, the goal is to be God conscious. And what I mean by that is when you wake up in the morning, what's your first thought? 
I'm hungry. I got to go to the bathroom. First thought should be, the Lord Jesus Christ should be on your thoughts. What's the last thing in your mind before you go to sleep? The Lord Jesus Christ. That's 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 a part of being God conscious. It's a lifelong process, theosis. You're not going to say, well, I've done it for 10 years, I'm done. No. You're going to do it all the way up to the time you give up your, your spirit and, uh, and, and put it into the hands of the Lord. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 4. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. Okay, that's what God has given us. He promises. And I know God doesn't lie. And when he says something, it's true. He doesn't change. He's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. You can, you can put that, you can take that to the bank, as they say. By these promises that we, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature. You can't be God, but you can be partakers of the divine nature. As Second Peter tells us in uh, chapter 1, verse 4, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Pretty, right, right between the eyes, Peter's telling you, right between the eyes, this is it. Now, example of theosis. Take a sword or any kind of metal. You put it into the hot fire, the glowing hot fire. And what does it do? Eventually, the sword starts to glow. It takes on like the attributes of the, of the glowing fire. But if you remove the sword from the fire, what happens? It starts to slowly cool down and it doesn't glow anymore. And that's us. When we are not subjecting ourselves to theosis, we can't glow for God. We shrink back in our faith. Our union with God is impeded. You feel like you're lost again. It's like this. You face the sun in the morning and it's beautiful, it's warm, it's bright on your face. You turn your back, turn around, and you feel like there's no sun. But you can still feel the warmth on your back. God loves us. And He's always shining His love on us. But we, because we don't repent, we don't make a U-turn and turn around, we can't experience that love of God in our in our being because we've got our back towards us. And that's why he wants repentance, the means of salvation, to turn and face the Lord. I know it's only a little metaphor, a little the description of facing the sun for the, experiencing the warmth and the light. Jesus Christ knows our struggle. He's our high priest, isn't he? Come and dwell among us. He knows our difficulty. So you can't say God doesn't understand what I'm going through. Yes, He does. He has suffered everything in the flesh so He can connect with His creation. So another thought. Does God send us to hell? No. We send ourselves there by not being in union with Jesus Christ. By not accepting the sacrifice at Calvary, you, you get a problem. We have a problem. It's, Jesus Christ is sent by the Father, and the Father says at that baptism, this is my Son in whom I am well pleased, and then he goes to the cross eventually, three years later, and you scoff that sacrifice and don't accept it. You're in major, you have major trouble between uh, you and God because he loves his Son. And he didn't hold his, withhold his only son. He gave his son to us. So we got to make a U-turn in our life. Driving a car down the road or a motorcycle or a bicycle, you want to go a different direction, you got to make a U-turn. And that's what repentance is, is making that U-turn. Remember, here's some people that made U-turns. Saul of Tarsus became Paul, didn't he? Total radical change of being a Christian killer to being one of the most prolific writers in the epistles. Peter denied the Lord three times. What happened? He repented, didn't he? He didn't have to go hang himself like Judas did. 
He wept bitterly, and the Lord forgave him. That's all he had to do is go, all Judas had to do is go see the Lord and ask for forgiveness. But we know in Scripture that wouldn't happen because at the Last Supper, do what you have to do, the Lord told him. It would be better for him not to be born because Satan has entered his heart, Judas Iscariot. And think about Zacchaeus, the tax collector. His repentance. Remember, the sycamore tree. Looking at the Lord coming. There was an interesting thing there. Maybe that was a process of starting to repent. After he got done with the Lord, he says, I will give half of my goods to the poor. And if I have defrauded anybody of anything, I will restore it fourfold. That's repentance. You see that? Now the fourth person is a thief on the cross. The good thief, we call him. Does he have a name? Yes, his name is Dismas. He was crucified next to the Lord with the other thief. One reviled Christ. But this thief made a U-turn in his life. And Jesus says, This day you will be with me in paradise. In other words, this quick quote from C.S. Lewis. He said, We all want progress. Progress means getting nearer to the place where you want to be. Where you want to be. And if you have taken a wrong turn, then to go forward does not get you any nearer. You fall, you're getting further away. If you're on the wrong road, progress means you're doing an about turn and walking back to the right road. And in that case, the person who turns back the soonest is the most progressive. So as soon as you are illuminated and, and, and realize, like the prodigal, you wake up you get back on the right path. How many of us are on the wrong path? How many? What is our attitude towards sin? Do we realize that that sin separates us from a holy God? It separates us. Do we even care that we're, we fall into sin and we, and we just love that? It is so, but it has bad fruit, doesn't it? Fruit of sin is death, spiritual death. So, what do we do? Tell us, confess your sins one to another. The church tells us to do that. The scriptures tell us to do that. And has given us a, a, one of the tools in the toolbox, confession. But sometimes our pride gets in the way, doesn't it? And God says, guess to me. If you're proud, I'll resist you. But if you're humble, I'll be drawn to you. So there's another key or another little bit of a, a bit of wisdom on how to turn God on to, to be with you. Be humble. No matter what. He gives you opportunities all day to be humble or proud. Now, here's some God's promises. Old Testament now. Nehemiah. But if you return to me Return, you make a U-turn, repent, and keep my commandments, Christ has commandments, and do them. Though some of you were cast out to the furthest part of the heavens, yet I will gather them from there and bring them to the place where, which I have chosen as a dwelling place for my name. That's Nehemiah. Now Isaiah, I have blotted out like a thick cloud your transgressions and like a cloud your sins. Return to me, for I have redeemed you, saith the prophet Isaiah. And one more, Zechariah. Therefore say to them, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Return to me, saith the Lord of hosts, and I will return to you. You see how that works? You've got to go first. You've got to go first, and then he'll come to you. So in conclusion, today of it's amazing when I say, well, in conclusion, everybody goes, oh, he's about ready to wrap it up. We're almost done. We should be, when Israel lost the book of the law and then uh, Nehemiah was uh, reading, found the book and started to read it, they, stood, they stayed there eight hours and listened to the law uh, of, of God. That's how excited they were about finding the book of the law. Kind of interesting how it is today, isn't it? St. John, 
Climacus, John the Letter. He wrote this. We shall not be condemned at the end of our lives because we did not perform miracles, nor because we failed to theologize, nor because we have failed to have a divine vision, but because of one reason only. We did not repent continuously. Good words from St. John, huh? Make that you turn in your life. Turn back to God from yourself. From hatred to love. From hell to heaven. From death to life. Turn from self-service and self-concern to God's service and God concern. Turn from your pride, your smugness, complacency, self-appointed goodness, and turn to a total dependence of God on His grace and His power. I want to close with this. We say this in divine liturgy. And sometimes you can just read over the words and not let them go deep into your heart. And we say this, commemorating, commemorating our most holy, most pure, most blessed and glorious Lady Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary with all the saints. Listen to this. Let us commend ourselves and each other and our whole life unto Christ our God. And that's our order from heaven today that we would commend ourselves and each other and our whole life unto Christ our God. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, glory be to Jesus Christ. Glory forever.